Hey, welcome back to Bob's Two Car Garage. Now, what I have in my hand right here is a picture of me in 1973 building this desk. It was one of the very first pieces of furniture that I ever made, and we got a lot of use out of it, but nobody wants it anymore, and I just don't have the heart to throw it away, so I'm going to repurpose it. Stick around. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my old, beautiful heirloom. Hi, my name is Bob, and I love my two-car garage. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is strip off this old, ugly finish that I put on here originally. Originally, when I did it, I knew it was a mistake, but it was too late to go back, so it's been that way for many, many years, and uh, finally, I'm going to make it look pretty. Went out and bought some stripper, some lacquer thinner, some paper towels, some plastic putty knives that are going to work great for stripping off the stripper and some chip uh, brushes because I'm going to throw everything away that I use for the stripping process and I bought also some disposable buckets. I could just sand this because most of it is solid wood but if I sand it I'm going to lose some of the detail. And there's a lot of detail on these edges here. This was shaped on a shaper. I got a, other, a lot of other little details. So by using the stripper, I'm gonna preserve a lot of those details. All right, well, it's been about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna scrape this off with a little plastic putty knife, which is gonna work great, because that way I don't damage the, the wood itself. Don't put any scratches in it. The top is actually plywood. The rest of it's solid wood, so I don't have a lot to worry about there. But plastic putty knife, Works great for, for scraping this stuff off. And finally, I'm gonna wipe it down with some lacquer thinner and some paper towels, kind of neutralize what's going on there. Now, I think the one reason why this desk didn't get used is it was just so big. So I decided it would lot, be a lot more useful for a lot more people if I just made it smaller. So my final dimensions, we're 24 by 44, and I started by cutting the top down, of course, on my table saw. And I really wanted to preserve those edges, so I was really careful to cut off that molding so I could reattach it later. I used both pocket hole screws and glue to reattach the edge to the new smaller top. And I also used pocket hole screws in the corners to make those miters nice and tight and to help line them up a little bit. I cut down the carcass with my little battery powered skill saw. It did great. Cut nice and clean through two inch solid oak. Great little saw. And of course, that was the point of no return. Next, the drawer guide frames needed to be removed and cut down, modified, made shorter. So I took out all the screws. Can't believe way back when I put all these screws in by hand. Just took the whole thing apart. I must have been crazy. Cut them down on my miter box saw. And then I recut some pieces for the rear. These pocket hole screws to put them back, back together, and then reinstall installed them in the, uh, in the original carcass. I used a spacer block and some clamps just to get them in the proper position and make sure that the spacing was correct. Now on the back side here and on the bottom, I had to figure out a way to hold this up because I cut off the leg. So I'm putting a piece of plywood in here that's going to run all the way down to the floor. I'm going to pocket hole screw it, screw it here and then probably add another piece underneath right here on the bottom to uh, help hold this in position because there's going to be a lot of weight on the back side of this thing. So this is my solution for the legs that I had to cut off. Now, of course, the drawers were too long as well, so I had to cut those down. 
If it was safe to do so, I did it on my table saw. But I also used my favorite little battery powered skill saw to cut off some of the sides. Now, originally all these drawers were dovetailed and I wasn't able to do that without completely remaking all the drawers. So what I did is I cut them down and then as you can see here, I just butted a piece in the rear and screwed it from the sides and from the bottom. It's nice and solid. It's gonna last another 30 something years. And I used the router to round off the top edges of each of these drawers. Now, as much as possible, I wanted this restoration or this remake to be made from the original materials, but because I had to make this whole new side right here with these legs, I had to bite the bullet and go out and buy some, some two inch oak. The original material was white oak. This is red oak, but it stains so dark that you can't really tell the difference. <laughs> Turned out great. Now for the joints on these legs, I use mortise and tenons. I know a lot of people are using the pocket hole screws for uh, legs on desks and chairs and tables, but really the mortise and tenon is much stronger. I'm a big fan of the pocket hole screw jig, the Craig jig. It's great, does a lot of things well, but for table legs and for chair legs, the mortise and tenon is the way to go. So this little mortising jig is pretty cool. Mortise it does a mortise and a tenon. This side right here does the mortise. And this side does the tenon. And you use it with this bit right here that is kind of a reverse flush cutting bit. Once I had my mortise and tenons cut, I clamped it up, squared it up, and let it dry. Now there was a little detail on the front edge of this leg that I wanted to duplicate. It's just a tiny little groove that runs the whole length of the leg. Originally, I did that with a really skinny table saw blade, which I don't have anymore. So I got out my favorite little trim router here and an accessory that came with it that I've never ever used before. Put a 16th of an inch straight bit in this router and ran it along the front edge so that that new leg just looks like the old leg. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, I got all the pieces made and this guy's ready to go together. This piece right here is going in the back, a little skirt. It's gonna hold the new set of legs on that I made. This little piece right here is going to be a brace for the bottom. We'll go along there. I'm going to attach all those with pocket hole screws. And then here's my drawer guide that I made smaller. It's going to go right in there like that. So right now I'm going to put this whole thing together, mostly with screws. All right, it's getting exciting. It's starting to look like a little desk. Now, one of these drawer guides needed to be replaced. So I actually milled a new one. I hot glued it in place and I tacked it on the front and on the rear.
Originally, the drawer guide that was on the carcass side looked like this. It was a, just a long piece of wood with a notch on the end, but I didn't like this because this piece is really weak. So what I did was I added an extra rail to the middle of my drawer guide assembly here. This is pocket hole screwed front and rear. And then I cut a little strip that I laid right on top of that and tacked it front and rear and glued that in place. Now, one of the little improvements that I wanted to make on this, on this piece of furniture uh, in the rebuild here is uh, it's difficult sometimes to get these drawers to go back just the right amount so they're perfectly flush for, with the front. So what I did on the back side of these drawers, I put T-nuts and those T-nuts have a bolt or a screw that goes in them. And that way I can adjust that screw right there uh, in or out of that T-nut so that that drawer lines up perfectly with the front edge of the piece of furniture. I'm taking the molding off of the other bank of drawers and I'm using it on this side over here that uh, I'm keeping because some of the molding was kind of busted up. And um, originally when I built this, I was not allowed to use any nails because it was part of a class that I had. So, but I'm using some nails this time. Uh, I don't want to just clamp it and wait for it to dry. You're not going to be able to see those nail holes. I'm keeping it as pure as possible. And at this point, the whole thing was ready for sanding and staining. The toner that I used is uh, penetrating oil stain. It's the color is called Jacobian, and it's a Minimax product. Now, in order to attach the top, I use this little piece of hardware right here. It looks like a figure eight. So it allows you to screw from both directions. I'm using these along the sides, or I use these along the sides. In the rear, I'm using some pocket hole screws. I'm using a lot of these because they're pretty hardy, but I'm not sure I trust them that much. I found some pretty new knobs at a little hardware store, a little more stylish and up to date. So I'm using those. Well, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I still need to put a top coat on it. Pretty sure I'm gonna spray on some lacquer, but it looks really good. I hope somebody can use it now. It's a lot smaller and I think it's a lot more manageable or a lot more useful for a lot of people. Thanks for watching. I want to leave you with this proverb that says, a wise man holds his tongue. I hope this video didn't get too long. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>